Hello, welcome to another lesson about the river. This is a story that I have to share with you, but it also has a chart that I colored. And we were, we look, last time we looked at me sitting alongside of some sandy soil and running some water from a hose down this hillside. And what we noticed is that the water did what water and liquids do, it flowed down and out. And as it went down the hill, it did the work of a river, which is to carve sediment, to carry sediment, and deposit sediment at the bottom. And so what we noticed is that up high, the water was flowing from up high and down the hill. So the most, the, like the key part there is that we know water flows down and out, and that water flows from higher land to lower land. Now, I drew a chart or colored a chart when I was thinking about these ideas, and I would like to share that chart with you. And so I'm going to switch our view so you can also see the chart. Okay, so here is the chart that I have colored. Is You can see that it's a map of the world. Here's North America and Greenland, South America, Australia, Africa, Europe and Asia. And so it's just a map of the world and it has some colors on it. I'm going to go into a full screen of the map so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to move it down a little bit so you can see right here. So the brown is highland. Brown is like tall, tall mountains and tall land. Yellow is medium highlands, so still mountainy, higher elevation. Um, and then the light green is medium lowlands, so like rolling hills and uh, land that has some shape to it. And then the dark green is lowlands, which is pretty flat land, pretty close to the level of the ocean. So as we start with dark green, that's pretty low flat land. That's like even with the shoreline of the oceans. Medium lowlands is like hilly land that's not quite as low to the ocean level. Medium highlands are mountainy areas, and then highlands are the rugged big mountains. And so you can see that there are um, bits of all of that type of land all over on Earth. So when we know that rivers flow from highlands to lowlands, I want to look at some of these. So when we look at this map, I see highlands. There's some little spotty ones in there. And I see some medium highlands, that's this yellow. And I see some medium lowlands, it's this light green. And I see some lowlands, that's the dark green. Okay, all along the coastlands, like here on the United States, all along the eastern coast and down by Florida and across Mississippi in that area, that is all lowland. But when I look here closer to where we live, where the Rocky Mountains are, I can see that those are highlands. We can also see some black squiggly lines on this map, and the black squiggly lines are showing rivers. Here's a river. And here's a river, and here's a river. So when we're looking at these rivers, like let's look at this one here. I'm going to point to it. When we look at this river here, it's starting up here in the highlands in the mountains, and it's crossing the medium highlands and into the medium lowlands. And once it gets down here to the lowlands, it joins this river, and this river, and they all flow down into the ocean. This river is the Mississippi River, and this stretch of it up here that starts in the Rocky Mountains is the Missouri River, and it connects to the Mississippi River and the Ohio River. Here's another river that starts in the Brown Highlands and flows through the Medium Highlands, the Medium Lowlands, and all the way out to the Lowlands. Here's another one in South America. You might already know the name of this river. This river starts up here in the Andes Mountains and these highlands and a couple different places. They come down through the medium highlands. Oh, actually, there aren't even any medium highlands. It just goes from highlands to medium lowlands in this river into the lowlands. This is the Amazon River. That's the Amazon River. 
And as we see that, we see rivers all over. Look at the rivers over here in Europe. In Europe, I don't know if you can see that. In Europe, we can see this river starts up here in this yellow area and flows down through the lowlands and empties right here. Here's some that start up in these highlands right here from Turkey and flow all the way down through Saudi Arabia and out into the, red, into the, to the sea right there. Look at this river in Africa. It starts way up here in these highlands and then it loops around. Look at this, this river is flowing north through Egypt. Maybe you know which river flows north through Egypt. That's the Nile River. Something that's really cool about the Nile River is that it, we can see it flows, starts from the highlands, flows through the medium highlands for a tiny bit, and then most of its course is through the medium lowlands to the lowlands at the mouth of the river. This river, the Nile River, is it flows north which is interesting because normally we think of rivers flowing down, but down doesn't have to mean south. Down just means lower hills or lower land. You can see there's lots of rivers coming out of this. These are the Himalayan mountains here. You can see lots of rivers are coming out of those big, big mountains. Here's some rivers that are draining through China and Russia. And all of these rivers have names. Maybe you would like to explore some of these rivers that have, a, that some of these rivers from different places. Sorry, Mike, there we go. <laughs> Maybe you would like to do some exploration and learn more about the rivers and where they come from. So the, this lesson is, is to talk to you about or share with you that rivers always flow from higher, higher land or mountains down to lowland. And sometimes that lowland is the ocean. Sometimes that lowland um, is into a lake. And sometimes that lake is where it ends. Um, sometimes, like this one right here, like this one right here, sometimes a river starts in a lake and flows down to the lowlands. So that's really interesting. I find all of this stuff so interesting and fascinating to look at how rocks and uh, mountains affect how water can do its work because all the particles are just doing their work. Rocks are standing still, water's slowing down and out, and gas is floating all around. I can't wait to see your follow-up for this work. Oh, um, I have another video to share with you. I'm going to record that as a separate one, uh, but stay tuned down below because we're going to talk about we're going to talk about a connection that we make to some of the other work we've been doing. Okay, see you next time.